Hi all you sake lovers out there. You know, I think a lot of sake brewers are interested in using organic rice to brew with, but it doesn't always make economic sense for them to do so, especially for smaller breweries. Mm. Um, organic rice is more expensive and it's a little bit difficult for them to pass those costs on to consumers because people aren't really so worried about something being organic that they don't drink every day. Mm and they can't really taste the difference maybe between a regular sake and an organic sake. But I think there are a lot of good reasons to support the use of organic rice in brewing. And so today I'm here with Selena. Hi! And we're gonna see if we can switch you onto organic sake. Woohoo, let's go! So Selena, um, you've had a lot of sake with me in yeah. the past, <laughs> but is it something that you um, reach for or that you drink on your own on a regular basis? Um, not as much, more so after like talking with you and, and learning more about Nihonshu with you over the years, but still when I usually go for a drink, it's usually wine or beer. Nihonshu is usually something that's kind of special for okay. me. Um, or it's something that I um, do when I can share it with more people. I see. I don't want it to go bad in the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Um, what like what kind of beer or wine do you usually drink? Uh, beer, basically anything. I love really strong, bold, interesting flavors. And wine, I'm like a dry red wine kind of person typically. Okay. So, um, so if you saw in a store like a regular sake and on an organic sake, like mm -hmm. labeled organic. Um, do you think that you would be attracted to the second one? Absolutely. I actually work on organic farms in my free time and stuff, and so I really value organic. Um, I think that it's something that should be supported for many reasons. So, yeah, if I see that, I'm definitely going to... For me, I'm not um, as knowledgeable or perhaps picky as you are. So I'm just kind of like, oh, that sounds cool. I okay. like organic. I want to support that. And I'll go for that one. Okay. If they're, if Even if it was more expensive? If it was a little bit more expensive, then I would still go for it. Okay. Because I think I like Nihonshu is, um, like, it has a really, like, the value is really high. So I'm like, yeah, that's fine. If it's a lot more expensive, like 1.5 to 2 times the, the price, I might... About yeah, it usually more. it's not. Usually in Japan it would be like a couple hundred yen. Yeah. Like it might be, um, the regular one is a, a thousand five hundred, so mm -hmm. like say 15 bucks. And uh, the organic is maybe like two thousand. Um, for so... that, I would absolutely go for the organic. Okay. Yeah. So, Aaron, can I ask you a question sure. before we start? Yeah. So, how difficult or how easy is it to find organic sake in Japan? Is it something that's really popular? Is it something that's kind of rare? How did you find these and how difficult was it? Um, uh, that's a little bit of a difficult question because mm. um, the problem with organic, with with using organic rice, one of the problems is that, you know, the, the water flows between the fields, mm -hmm. right? So it's actually a little bit difficult to um, uh, register uh, or want to certify mm -hmm. um, one particular field as organic, right? Yeah. Um, so the, um, I don't know exactly how it works, but in, in what I'm imagining is, is that um, it has to be fields or a collection of fields that are separated from other fields mm -hmm. and have their own source of water coming in because, um, you know, the organic certification process actually is actually quite um, difficult. To get oh, through. Is it? Well, I mean, you have to wait a certain number of years oh, and, wow. and things like that. So, For the soil to be considered yes, organic? Yeah. Wow, interesting. Um, so, there are, um, I would say, the number of uh, sake that are labeled organic and mm -hmm. certified organic are not so, there are not so many of those. Mm -hmm. Although there are breweries who specialize in oh. that kind of sake. Yeah. Um, and I will list them in the comments below and the uh, in the in the video if you're interested in checking those out. Um, but there are a lot more breweries who maybe use rice that was grown without agricultural chemicals. Oh. It's just it's not certified organic. 
Mm. So sometimes it won't have like organic on the label, but on the back, it will say grown without agricultural chemicals. Uh, um, yeah. So it's a lot easier to find those. Mm. It's not so easy to find things that are actually labeled organic. We'll see a, some, a few of those today though. Yeah, that makes sense. I know my friends who have a farm in Yamanashi, they, you have to think about, okay, are we downstream from mm. people who are using chemicals and how can or we... next to right because yeah. it can blow over the road yeah the road or so something. there's it's kind of you do what you can mm. but it it's um it's interesting that it's such a difficult process that it takes so much time to yeah get I think with like fields that are um just you know corn or wheat or something mm -hmm. like that it's a lot easier because the the material is not running between them like the yeah water is, yeah right? absolutely um. Thanks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to taste four varieties of uh, organic sake and then we're going to try it with uh, a special plate of uh, vegetarian food because Selena is a vegetarian um, that I had prepared by a local um, uh, shop that does mm. like uh, salads and things like that and it uses local vegetables from the area. Uh, and then you're gonna t we're going to talk about which ones we thought went, went well with which food and um, which ones we like best. I am so excited. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Awesome. Okay, so our first selection today is from uh, Tentaka Brewery in Tochigi. Um, and they're pretty well known for um, making organic sake. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, an organic sparkling and also uh, nigori sake. My and uh, Selena also noticed, so this is actually a certified organic and it's certified vegan as well. Cool. Now most sake actually is vegan, it's just not necessarily um, certified as vegan. Oh. Um, they, some big breweries actually do use gelatin to remove particulate matter from the sake, but most small breweries don't do that. So most breweries you can probably assume are, it is vegan. Um, but uh, it's actually difficult to go through the process of certifying that, blah blah blah, so not all of them write it on the label. Uh, but anyway, let's try this. I, yeah, let's. I'm very excited. I love Nigori Sake so much. So Tentaka is um, pretty famous for... Um, I will pour yours first, sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> uh, pretty well known for um, making a dry style of sake, a dry and lighter style of sake. Mm. Um, which I know you're kind of into the dry ones. Aaron knows my sake tastes kind of better than I do, I think. <laughs> okay, first we'll do a kanpai. Kanpai! And see what this smells like. It, I can already smell it from yeah. here. It's really effervescent. Now, I don't usually like sparkling sake too much because mm -hmm. it tends to be really sweet and okay. like syrupy, mm -hmm. but a nigori sparkling with this smell, I'm really Yeah, what kind of smell are you getting off of that? I mean, I kind of, I do this a lot, but I feel like I smell melon, like a cantaloupe mm. smell, yeah. like really bright yep. forward. Yep. I would there's say... there's like a minty or like some kind of fresh herb mm. yeah. that I'm smelling yeah. too. You're right. Yeah, I feel um, like it's almost like, you know, there's like cucumber, melon, like hand soaps, and I mean this in a really <laughs> nice way. <laughs> I love that smell, but like it the, has that like kind of like... the soaps that you want to eat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You're like, ooh, so fresh. Like, it, it has a really fresh, like, this could be like, um, like a really nice summer sake. Okay, maybe. let's try it. Mm. Oh. Mmm. Mm. That's so good. <laughs> That's really good. That's, That's really so good. This is, yeah, it's not too sparkling. The um, mm. uh, carbonation is not too much. It's not, it doesn't take away from it. It's actually really thick. Um, when he was pouring it, you probably couldn't see, but it, it was, it's very um, kind of viscous. Mm. It's very thick, but the little bit of carbonation lightens it up it. Yeah. enough. Yeah. This is like summer cocktails in the sun on the veranda kind of sake, which might not be people's image. Like I think people have like 
you know, you're in a bar and you're drinking sake and maybe a heavier image, but this is so mm, light and yeah, fresh. Yeah, definitely something like picnic, barbecue, mm. summer. Um, I also, there was a, a one kind of similar to this that I drank the other day, and mm. I also had the idea of actually putting, like, summer fruits into it oh, like, almost like a sake sangria kind of thing yeah but just like when you drink it like putting the fresh fruit into it and mm. letting it kind of infuse or yeah. like mint or something like that oh, i feel yeah. like this would be a good thing to do with not all sake are good for cocktails i mean most i would say are not i don't know um but this is it's so um versatile i feel like it could absolutely be a cocktail base and it's so clean mm. Um, there is a little bit, nigori often has a little bit of bitterness at the end from the lees, mm. um, but it's not overdone. Um, it's a little bit beery to me in the end, like a little bit lagery. On the of. back of your tongue? Yeah, yeah. yeah, on the back of your tongue, it kind of, it hits the, the tip of your tongue and kind of sparkles, and in the, in the middle of the tongue, it's really fresh. And on the back of the tongue, you're right, it gets a little bit more like body mm. to it. This is, <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> Now our second one is a um, Junmai Ginjo from uh, uh, Tsuchiya Brewery in Nagano. Um, and the name of the brand is Akane, Akane Sasu. Um, and it refers to kind of like the, the color of the sky at um, sunset, oh, like nice. the red color of the sky. Um, and this, um, we were talking about uh, the being grown in special fields and this is actually used as rice only grown in one specific field wow. um, for the terroir of the you know like the water and the the soil and the air and the minerals just in that one specific field as try to express um the sensation of that right wow that is very japanese yeah well it's actually <laughs> french well uh, i mean but that kind yeah. of like the elements combining to be this really special sacred thing is yeah. like that's something that's very celebrated in but Japan. this this um brewer actually he really likes wine and oh. so he he kind of took uses that idea from the french vineyards that like special certain vineyards are very special mm. um and uh is applying that to i mean a lot of brewers actually are doing it in that that in japan now under the influence of the wine industry some people have an issue with that i don't because i think it's kind of interesting but let's taste it why do people have an issue with that um they think that uh sake should be sake nihonshu should be nihonshu and wine should be wine and um i can see that um but i also see the other side which is it's nice to kind of play around and mix concepts and ideas between you know yeah. different things you know you can always i mean you can always make the like Nihonshu, Nihonshu, the sake, sake, but why not? Like, you're always going to have that, so why not try some other things and explore and have fun? This one also smells really strong. Yeah, we, you can smell it, like, from here before we even well, bring it to our nose. It's really, this one's really clear and... Yes, it's very clear. Like watery. Yeah. But you can still see Crystal. some little, like, particles floating in it. It's not like a... I don't have super. my glasses, so I can't oh, okay. really see. But is there is there a little bit of cloudiness? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Sometimes, yeah, like sometimes it's a good idea, and I forgot to do this with it, especially with a dark bottle, it's a good idea to invert it because there sometimes can be particles that are down at the bottom. And um, it, like in a contest or a, a, you know, an award, um, having particulate matter is bad. Um, oh. But it can actually change the flavor of it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So um, if you have a dark bottle, it's always good to kind of just invert it before drinking. I forgot to do that. But uh, what do you smell? Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I can put my nose in this, especially this glass yeah. really um, directs the smell. Yeah. This is like my favorite shape of glass to drink a lot of things out of, but... It smells like candy, like mm. a fruity, almost chalky candy. I'm nervous about this one. It is going to be a little I, sweet. Yeah. So there's there's a kind of sweetness that kind of um like when it's kind of like cloying or um. But it's not going to be little like bit, that sweet. No, a little bit chalky or mm. like um, that kind of thing. But I'm it's getting... not super medicinal. But it almost tastes like 
Remember sweet tarts? Mm. I almost feel like it smells a little like sweet tarts. Okay. I mean, I'm getting um, melon again, especially cantaloupe with this one. For I almost, me. Oh, I get pear. Okay. I get yep. a lot of like um, Definite western pear. pear. Yep, yep, definitely. And I can see like, um, it's not medicinal, but there is a little bit of like, like fennel or something like that. I was trying like to figure out because it wasn't like a clove kind of spice, but there's something. Yeah. Like, I don't know, sometimes when I'm smelling things, when I'm tasting things, um, I'm not as good as Aaron. Aaron is like, ah, oh, yes, I smell the blade of a grass that's seen the sun for three hours. I'm you know, not like that I, good. He's I'm really good. good. But for me, like, sometimes I just put something in my head. I'm like, can I smell, like, I'm smelling something in this range. Can mm. I smell cardamom and smell, do I, like, do I smell that with cardamom in mind? No. Okay, let's try something else. That's kind of how I cheat that. That is beautiful. Really? It's beautiful. Try it. Wow. So nice. Is it too sweet for you? No, not at all. It's so smooth. It's mm. like, it like hits like front of your tongue, back of the tongue, and almost like just glides over the yeah. middle without leaving yeah. anything behind. Yeah, there's no, like when you smell it, you think it's going to be kind of a syrupy glop. Yeah, like, you know, like, I thought it was going to be like kind of coating my tongue. Yeah, it's not at all. It like That's just, beautiful. Like she said, it just kind of glides right over it. Um, a lot of spiciness too in the end. Do you get the spiciness yeah. in the end? Yeah. Oh. If you leave it in your mouth before mm. longer before swallowing it, like. It just gets, it kind of, for me, I don't know why, it just kind of builds and builds the spiciness in the back of your. Mm -hmm. That's really, I think this one, the other one is very like fresh cocktail, can drink it on its own see it with berries easily this one. I'm really curious to see what it pairs with. I have some ideas, I have some inklings, but...